Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be the fifth in the series on Art Deco cameras and today's video will center on the Ilford Envoy. Uh, so without further ado let's take a closer look at the camera and its history. So the Ilford Envoy was manufactured from 1953 to 1960 uh, by a company called Photo Developments Limited and they were they were tasked with the job of manufacturing this by Ilford uh, and it's a Bakelite camera and it's quite a sturdy thing I think it weighs about 400 grams there or thereabouts and as you can see it has the Art Deco design with the uh, flutes here on the side of the viewfinder and also uh, the ribbing that goes all the way around the camera and although it's not from the Art Deco period it's obviously designed under that style and it's quite a nice little camera so as I say there were three iterations made this being the first which was an all black affair the second iteration had an aluminium surround to the lens and it had Ilford Envoy uh, printed on the face. The third iteration uh, had the same surround but also a metal, aluminium metal uh, film wind on spool or cap rather and also the flutes around the side maintained the top and bottom rib but the middle three ribs were missing and it was just smooth Bakelite and I think it's quite a nice looking little camera um, but we'll go into all the details uh, on how it works in a moment Okay, so let's talk about the specifications of the camera. It actually takes either 120 or 620 roll film and gives us eight images, which are two and a quarter by three and a quarter inch in size. Uh, the lens, as you can see there, it's an Ilford Optimax plastic lens and it's got a focal length of 90 millimeters. Now, around the edge of the lens we can see some wording which uh, tells you that it uh, gives you two different focal uh, distances the first one it says let me think it says for faces pull out as you can see around there oops if it focuses and push in for What's it say? For pushing for places. Uh, the first one gives uh, for faces, it gives a uh, four foot to eight foot focal distance, and for the places, it gives uh, eight foot to. So if we look at the back of the camera, you can see that it's curved, and that helps to keep uh, the focus sharp across the width of the film, uh, alleviating some of the shortcomings of the lens itself. So the lens has an aperture of f16 and it also has a rotary shutter which gives us a single speed of 1 40th of a second and it's actually synchronized for flash by using the two contacts just below the lens. So on the top of the camera we have the wind on knob for advancing the film and we also have an aluminium shutter release just there to the left of the uh, viewfinder which is quite a nicely designed affair with all the nice fluting on the sides. Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to see through the viewfinder just about I guess and it does give quite a bright uh, view of the scene that you're taking of course it's not it's offset slightly 
but yeah it's a fun little camera now on either side of the um, top plate attached to it are some lugs for attaching a uh, strap so in order to load film we need to separate the top from the box which carries the lens and to do that if we look at, at the bottom of the camera there is a key or a dial switch whatever you want to call it which we rotate through 90 degrees and then the top just lifts out of the camera so let's put the box to one side for a second and have a look at this uh, part of the camera here and on this side of the camera is where we put the unexposed film and then we take off the lead roll it round across this metal um, spar here across the back across this second roller and then it fits into another spool which is located here and if you've noticed on the back here the plastic inside the uh, area where the image is taken it's ribbed and the reason for that ribbing is to take away any reflective light uh, and uh, stops it from spoiling your film and if we have a look at the box there's not a lot in here okay it carries the lens but it also locates the rotary shutter which you can see there and the and the shutter button here actually acts on this lever to take the fit to take the image and if we have a look on the back here we can see a view window where we can see the advancing film numbers uh, this was actually missing on uh, this camera when I bought it so I've got some acetate uh, obviously red in colour and I uh, cut out um, two sheets of the acetate and put them in position and it works very well and then we're good to go oh one thing I didn't uh, mention is that there is also if you can see it a tripod mount so as I said at the beginning of the video I actually put a roll of Ilford HP5 through the camera now in retrospect that was a bit of a mistake because I should have used uh, probably a 100 ASA film uh, now it was overcast which uh, prompted me to use the uh, 400 ASA film uh, but nevertheless I got some images uh, I missed the first three uh, pictures uh, but we've got uh, five uh, they're not anything spectacular I just wanted to try out the film to see if it was uh, the camera rather to see if it was sharp and just to see what images we got now I also developed the film in Rodinum uh, one plus 25 and the film's going to be grainy anyway so it's even more grainy by using Rodinum so the images are nothing special to say the least but I just wanted to try it out to uh, to see how it worked to be honest and what results I've got so we'll have a look at them now and you can make your own mind up whether they're good or bad
I think it's a great looking camera. It's very simple. It's easy to use. Um, and it does what it says on the box, I suppose. Uh, this cost me £10 plus postage and it's in very good condition. Some of the screws on it probably needs a little bit of a clean up uh, so they're nice and shiny again but there's no cracks um, or any problem with any part of the camera apart from this which I've repaired. So, ah, that's the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, there were three iterations of this camera but there was also a camera called the Ilford Envoy Ilford Envoy Wide Angle and that is a much more sophisticated camera and as I said I paid £10 for this one but the Ilford Envoy Wide Angle costs believe it or not from around £200, £300, £400 I've seen them going for and I was going to try and get one but when I saw the prices I thought hmm, let's look for one uh, that's a little bit better value than that but if that's the price they're going for then there's nothing I can do about that but as I say that's the end of episode 6 on the Ilford Envoy lovely little Art Deco styled camera which I'll be using again very very soon so hope you've enjoyed that episode 6 will be coming up very soon I've got uh, a few more uh, Art Deco cameras to use and review, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, there'll be another video coming up very, very soon. Cheers. <laughs>